So welcome, bienvenidos. We're so glad to see you at tonight's town hall about transitional kindergarten. I'm Nicole Young. I am one of the uh, consultants for Core Investments, and I am also one of the co-hosts for this evening's town hall. Okay, now I'm going to turn over to David to say a few welcoming words. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm David Brody. I'm the executive director at First Five Santa Cruz County, and uh, we are really excited to see all of you here tonight. On behalf of the First Five team, all of our partners, I want to thank you for participating uh, in tonight's town hall. There are so many changes going on in the early care and education sector in California right now that we know it can feel you know, overwhelming for parents and caregivers of young children, um, as well as for people who are child care providers and educators. So tonight's focus is on providing information that will help parents understand what transitional kindergarten in particular is. So you can take the first step uh, in making the best choice for you and your children uh, coming into the new school year. If you're a child care provider or educator, we're glad you're here. Um, and you're welcome to ask questions and share your input. And just know there are there are other meetings and discussions happening that focus specifically on child care providers, whereas tonight we're really focused on parents, their questions, and their needs for their children. Um, so let's see, next slide, I believe. So uh, we're going to now take a moment to see who's in the room uh, this evening. Nicole is going to just launch the poll so you can tell us if you are a parent, a child care provider, a teacher, administrator, interested community member or something else. So all you have to do is select uh, your choice in the poll and hit the submit button. And we'll just take a minute to see who's here tonight. Just another few more seconds for people to complete the poll. Okay, it looks like the responses have slowed down. So I'm gonna end the poll, David, and show the results. All right, here we go, and kind of what we expected. It looks like the majority of folks tonight are parents, wonderful. We also have a strong contingent of childcare providers and teachers, um, school administrators, even other community members. Uh, so yeah, quite a nice mix of folks. Good to, again to have all of you here tonight. Um, so let's see, now we're gonna move on to introductions in the chat. Um, please introduce yourself in the chat, as I said, share your name, uh, and we'd love to hear the ages of any children in your family. And I will do the same thing myself. Mine are a little older than, uh, than TK. I think I just sent a direct message to somebody about my kids. Anyways, they're 15 and 18, hard to believe. All right. So yeah, let's see those chats coming in. We want to know we want to know all about you, your names, and the and the ages of your kids. So while you introduce yourselves, um, I'd like to take a moment to again thank the team that's co-hosting and supporting this town hall, including our core investments team, uh, Cradle to Career Santa Cruz County, the Santa Cruz County Office of Education, uh, as well as the Child Development Resource Center within the COE. Um, simultaneous interpretation is provided by Jorge Valenzuela. Sorry, Valenzuela. Uh, and Gisela Carrasco is providing bilingual chat support. Um, she's going to translate questions and comments, as I think Nicole said in the chat, from English to Spanish and Spanish to English. So thank you, Jorge and Gisela, um, for all your support. And now we're going to move on to the agenda. So before I hand over uh, things uh, to our facilitators, I want to share our agenda. Um, tonight, we're going to hear a brief presentation on what transitional kindergarten is all about, what it is followed by stories from uh, some local parents and their experiences with TK. Then our facilitators are gonna raise a few questions that have been asked either um, at time of registration or during the town hall itself through the chat, et cetera. Um, so we have a few representatives from school districts and our Child Development Resource Center um, to help answer those questions. So now I want to introduce our amazing facilitators and speakers. Um, I am pleased to introduce our co-facilitators first for this evening, Diana Valadez and Julissa Silva. 
Diana is the mother of two children, nine and 11 years old. She is a parent leader and promotora for Live Oak Cradle to Career. Uh, and Diana is, a passion, is passionate about advocating for her own children and for other children in our community. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Elisa is also a Live Oak Cradle to Career parent, a leader and a promotora, as well as a COPA leader. Um, Elisa's passion is to help all families find the services they need and to advocate for education, good health, and housing for her children, and to be a voice for other families in the community. Um, we're also very pleased to have uh, Casey Clappen back here with us tonight, the Assistant Superintendent for Elementary Education at Pajaro Valley Unified School District, uh, as well as Julio Andrade, um, a Watsonville resident uh, and parent and the director of our Cradle to Career Santa Cruz County initiative here in Santa Cruz. Um, Casey and Julio will be introduced further in a moment, but for now, I'm gonna turn things over to our wonderful facilitators, Diana and Lisa. Thank you. Over to you, Diana. Muchas gracias, David. Um, uh, thank you, David. Uh, thank you. Uh, it gives us great pleasure to see all of you here today, this evening, uh, for this community meeting. Uh, we want to begin by asking a question uh, for, to all of you. Please raise your hand if you would like to, and if you would like to open up your mic to ask a question. We're going to be asking uh, several people. Due to time limits, we can't call on everyone, but we'll call on some of the ones who raised their hand. And you can also answer in the chat in English or in Spanish, and Hitzela can translate them. So today's question is, in your dreams, how do you see your children and what hopes do you have for them? So we would like if two or three people could raise their hands and, uh, and could answer that question. And the question again is, in your dreams, how do you see your children and what hopes do you have for them? So please go ahead if somebody would like to share their response. I would also have to say that all of the answers and all of the questions that we're going to have here today on your behalf, there's never a wrong answer. All of the answers are welcome. And we hope that um, everyone can share. So welcome. And I would like to know who would like to participate. No puedo ver manos arriba. No sé si alguien me puede ayudar. I don't see any, uh, anyone's hand raised. Maybe I can call on someone. Okay. ¿Qué tal? What about Briana Acevedo? Would you like to share your response? Um, I am listening in as a child care provider. Okay. Gracias. ¿Qué tal, Nancy Cohen? All right, thank you. What about Nancy Cohen? No, I was, I was asking, what was the question? I walked away. En sus sueños, ¿cómo idealizan a sus hijos y qué? In your dreams, how do you see your children and what hopes do you have for them? Yeah, and I don't know if you can see, but it looks like Eva has her hand up. Okay. Hola, buenas tardes, Diana. Este, ahorita... La verdad, mi prioridad es la seguridad para right mis now, niños. the priority is uh, safety for my children. That's, that's what I have most in mind. Obviously, I, I want more. But that's one of my worries. Uh, that's one of my most elevated worries at the moment. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Does anybody else have their hand raised that I can't see? You can open up your mic. ¿Qué tal María Marín? Ah, uh, what about María Marín? Hola, aquí estoy. 
¿Qué, qué es lo que quiero para mis hijos? Yo lo que quiero que ellos sean personas exitosas. What I want is for them to be successful uh, for whatever goals they have in mind to achieve them. And myself as a mom, I'm present to help them and uh, never let them give up. ¿Alguien más quiere compartir? Would anybody else like to share? Um, yeah, I think I can share. Uh, as a as a parent of a five year old who is uh, just beginning their uh, who's just beginning education, I think good education for my children with um, uh, equal opportunities for all children. I think that's something that uh, uh, I want my children to have their experience. You know, for him to have a good education in order to have a better future. All right. Uh, if anybody else would like to continue to share, you can write them on the chat and they can be translated into English and Spanish in order to um, continue. So I'll pass it to Julissa. Uh, thank you, Diana, and thanks to everyone who uh, shared. So to continue with the agenda, I want to introduce um, you know, we're going to hear a brief presentation about transitional kinder in order for us to be able to understand what it is and what the options that are available are for the families. It gives me great pleasure to present uh, Mr. Casey, who has more than 25 years of experience as an educator. Casey uh, is... Uh, assistant Superintendent for Early Childhood Education in uh, Pajaro Valley School District, and where he is responsible for 16 elementary schools and two additional school sites uh, from kinder to eighth grade. He also supervises special services with uh, uh, early childhood education. Before United to with Pajaro Valley, he was a subdirector a uh, trainer and a teacher for 21 years in the Santa Ana Unified School District in Southern California. So I'll pass it on to Casey. Thank you very much, Jorge. I'm so happy to be here tonight. And now um, we have our magical question of the evening while we're all here. What is transitional kindergarten? So most of us are all aware of kindergarten, but what exactly is this transitional kindergarten all about? Transitional kindergarten came about around 12 years ago in California with a response to how important early learning is to our, to our kids, to our children, right? It truly matters. As if you look at that graph, that donut in the middle of the screen, you'll see that 90% of brain development happens before children turn five, right? So this is huge. This time in the lives of our kids are so important because the learning experiences, relationships, environments that surround the children are foundational for the rest of their life and for learning, right? Um, it truly um, speaks to the cradle to career pathway, right? And the importance of that. And so as we're thinking about it too, to keep in mind, early learning programs put children on a pathway to success, right? They get them ready for college, career, school. And they also show us that students who attend preschool before they ever go into kindergarten, they have four main findings about them. They have improved self self control and the ability to actually manage um, their own emotions, which is huge, right? Number two, they have higher achievement in school in math and reading in elementary school. That means it doesn't stop in third grade. It helps them continue to be successful all the way up. It also students who attend preschool before they enter kindergarten, they are more likely to not only graduate from high school, but will also, they're more likely to graduate college with a degree. So those are huge. So that's really where it came, where it stemmed from. And so as we're thinking about the goal of universal um, P 
pre-K or universal pre-kindergarten, or you may also hear that, that UTK now. It really came about to make sure that all of our, our four-year-olds have access, right, um, to early childhood um, education programs that year. So at least that they're getting at least one year before they ever step into a kindergarten classroom. That means we want to make sure it doesn't matter what your background, where you live, what your race is, what your immigration status is, what your income level is, that it's that equity and access right, to high quality pro early learning programs to, for our kids. So as you're looking at that, that cylinder over there with all the balls mixed together, really, it's all about parent choice and the opportunities for our students and our families. So you see, it doesn't matter if you want to attend a private preschool or the CSPP, which are our state, our California state preschool programs, or Head Start Preschool, or even uh, a UTK, which is Universal Transitional Kindergarten, which you'll hear about in a, in a couple slides. So what are your options? So it's really about making sure that our parents don't feel trapped, right? That they actually have more options more than ever available to them. So um, families have options. So the number one is we're here for TK for transitional kindergarten, right? Districts are required to offer TK to all children who are eligible and wish to enroll. So for this year, all students that have a birthday between September um, 2nd and April 2nd, they have that ability to qualify for this upcoming school year for, for transitional kindergarten. And we as districts have to offer that. Now, you're asking, well, do we have to go, Casey? Do we have to send our students to TK? Absolutely not. It's just one of your options that are free to families for students who actually qualify and are eligible based on their birth date. Um, and so families can continue to choose a, a preschool or a pre-kindergarten program also, meaning a Head Start or a state preschool or a home um, family childhood um, child care provider, right? All of all of those different options are still available, um, or a private preschool too. So as we're thinking about why why this matters so much, because we really know again going back to um, the development of our students and making sure that all kids have that opportunity before. They go walk into a kindergarten playground, um, not playground, or that too, a kindergarten classroom, right? That they have more and more opportunities to engage with other students, right? In classrooms, that socialization piece, those learning opportunities. And also, again, we'd want our parents to have options and choices and really know what is out there to support uh, not only the need of their of their child, but their need as a family too, based on their schedules and what they have going on in, in their lives. And then the third piece is we want to make sure that there are more trainings available for teachers more than ever. We want to make sure that our teachers are highly qualified and that they also have um, those early childhood education units and, and really understand how, um, how TK works. TK is based off of the, um, the preschool foundations, the learning foundations, and our curriculum framework. And so as we're thinking about the age of your, of your children, we don't want you to wait until four, right? Until, until they qualify for TK. We have all these other uh, um, options out there for preschool. So if your child's three years of age, there's preschools available, out there, whether they're private or state preschool opportunities, we have Head Start, right? And in some communities, we also have Migrant Seasonal Head Start. We and we also have the option of family child care homes um, where they can go to some uh, provider's house who's qualified as well. And as we as your child is turning four, right, and will turn five during the school year, Qualify, they may qualify for TK, which is that transitional kindergarten, depending on their birth date and their school district's policy. 
And right, they also have the option of continuing in their preschool or starting preschool. They have Head Start. And again, that family child care home um, venue also as well. And so as we're thinking about preschool, who operates these, these entities and, um, and yes, and who's responsible for them? So many of them are within the public school, um, school system. Right. Some of them are community agencies that are that are near your neighborhood, are all around you, private programs, and then again, those family child care homes, which are which are in other people's uh, home uh, child care providers' house, right? And who also has to uh, meet expectations as well and qualifications. And then TK, our transitional kindergarten programs, are being offered by our public schools. And as we're looking at those classrooms, what do those preschool and transitional kindergarten classrooms look like? Or for instance, in preschool, there, there are um, licensing requirements. We have one adult for every eight to 12 children, depending on where, what program and where, um, where you're trying to register your student and what type of program um, is housed there. And then with a maximum, um, number of students, usually it's under 24, right? But of course, the adult ratio goes with the number of students that are there. Um, as you're looking at transitional kindergarten, um, at this moment in time, California um, does require one adult for every 12 children um, with a max number of students at um, 24 students. Um, but this depends it depends on the actual school district, right? So for this upcoming year, I know our school district actually has an adult for every 10, um, 10 students, and we have a maximum of 20 students in our TK classrooms. It all depends what district it is. So as we're looking at preschool, right, you have choices and options out there. Some of our preschools are free. Um, some of them have eligibility requirements, and then others are um, a fee or a copay, right? Where you're paying the full fee for it, or you're just paying a, a piece of it based on maybe a sliding scale, where the rest of it may be subsidized. Um, and then we have our TK programs, right? The costs, they are free. They are absolutely free. So that's where that, that, U, that UTK piece right, comes into play because we want to, our state of California wants to make sure that all of our four-year-olds have access to free transitional kindergarten. So as we're looking at locations for service and making sure you know exactly where to enroll, right, um, your students would be attending the location of your choice, right, based on the qualification based on how how if there's an eligibility requirement or if you want to also we have um, pay right for those services and then you can enroll at any main agency um, or office or at those preschool sites you may also be able to enroll depending on if it's if it's a district um, housed preschool at their district office and that that ECE department there. As we're moving into our TK programs, um, locations and services, you want to first probably attend in your district of residence. You have that right. And at the school for in your boundary area, your neighborhood where um, in which you live. And then you also can enroll at the school offices. Um, or actually at the main district office as well. So in our district in Pajaro, you can sign up online, you can reach out to your neighborhood school, or again, you can go to the ECE department um, to sign up and they can help um, you find, um, find the location. And so here you look at the county of, of Santa Cruz, the different school districts and where, um, which is on the left and the TK programs where their school is 
um, that is offering it in their district. So you'll see in Bonnie Dune Unified, they're offering it at Pacific Elementary, right? All the way down to at the bottom, you have SoCal Union School District, and you have several locations over there. Um, um, and you have Pajaro Valley Unified smack dab in the middle there with multiple sites. It often matters how large your school district is too, right? Depending on how many schools they're being offered at, right? And then also I mentioned before, we have that, that birth date uh, that keeps getting earlier and earlier for your eligibility, but this year, um, if your child turns five between September 2nd and um, April 2nd, they do qualify for transitional kindergarten, but these are the dates and the, um, the birth dates that the districts are being are offering at the specific um, schools in those districts. And so there is a variety. So depending on what school district um, is your home district, you will want to contact either your neighbor, um, your neighborhood school or the school district itself to help provide that support. And then as you're thinking about it, right, we want to make sure that our, our wonderful preschool teachers and TK teachers all have the heart, right, that love for all of our students. We want them to make sure that they have the skill set, right? And then the knowledge also, we wanna make sure that they have their units in early childhood education and the right professional learning so they're able to, to really support this special age group of students as well. And so, of course, like I said before, how do we enroll, right? You're looking to enroll your student for your child for next year. The first thing you want to do is contact your school district or your neighborhood school. And most of the school of the school districts have it right on their website also. And you can often um, register um, online. Um, you can also contact the school or the school district or visit the, the school office or go down to the district office as well. I know all of our, our school districts in Santa Cruz County wanna make sure that we're in service to our families and make sure we get them enrolled in the in the, the TK class um, that is, is best fits their needs or also the preschool classes and early childhood programs that meet their needs as well. And so if you're still needing more assistance, right, and you can't get into the school site um, in your neighborhood or they're closed during um, summer or you're having a challenge getting to the school district too, the, uh, the Child Development Resource Center is also out there ready to help you too with free assistance. And they will... Um, they know about all the different programs that are available and the eligibility too that you may um, qual your child may qualify for as well. So you'll find the e the the website um, URL address and the telephone to also contact them for assistance too. So yes, so that's it for for my part. I hope there's hand it off. Thank you so much, Casey. That was a great overview and reminder. Uh, you explained it so clearly in terms of what TK is and what the options are. Uh, and what we'd like to do next, we'll, we'll have time for questions later on in this town hall. Before we do that, we'd like to hear just a few examples and stories from some of our local parents um, about what it was like for them when they were learning about trying to decide whether TK was the right option for their child, um, but also share some of their experiences about how um, learning about options and, and preparing themselves and preparing their children for something like TK actually is helpful later on when children are also going through different transitions and preparing for that. So we're actually going to hear from our facilitators, Diana and Hulisa, uh, as well as our um, other parent leader who's here this evening with us, Julio. 
Um, and so just to say a few words about Julio, um, he's a Watsonville resident and, and, a, and a parent. And as David said earlier, he's the director for Cradle to Career Santa Cruz County. Um, and Julio has a little one, Leonel, who's age five, who's about to start kindergarten in August at PBUSD. And Julio stands for love, equity, and justice for himself and for others. So we're really glad to have Diana and Julissa and Julio willing to share some of their experiences with us. Um, and so I think, Julissa, we're going to start with you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your experience and your story first? I want to begin by telling everyone that I have three beautiful children, a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 4-year-old. And my story, when my child went to TK, it was marvelous because he learned a lot, most of all in his language, because he was going to preschool only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, since to go to preschool, you have to pay uh, a certain amount, and we didn't have enough funding uh, to be able to send him all week. So he qualified uh, to go uh, twice a week, which was th Tuesday and Thursday. And then he went uh, for a whole year, but then the following year, due to his uh, date of birth, he is November 30th, and he had to go directly to TK. And the good thing about TK was that it was free, and we didn't need to pay anything. So we love that the schedule was between 8.15 to 1.40, and he learned a lot. Um, most of all, he developed his language skills. And uh, a week later, when he returned home, he was speaking a lot. So we were very surprised uh, at the fact that he wouldn't speak at home. But our surprise that was that um, his English, he had he knew more English than Spanish. So he was speaking English at 100%, but not a whole lot of Spanish. And then after that, he began to mix both languages and then he began to be able to communicate with us. But what I loved about him was that he learned a lot in the rules and the routines. And then when he started kindergarten, he was more than ready. So he was uh, at a higher level than his children. He was reading more, writing more. And I think that was the most marvelous thing. And I wanted in comparison to my oldest daughter, she went two years to preschool and same, she went uh, Tuesday and Thursday. And even though she's very intelligent, uh, her level of English was a little lower, but she was learning. And with my baby, I wanted her last year, I wanted, I wanted the days to be extended so that my youngest one would be able to enter TK because due to the experience that I had with my with my boy, he was more than ready to enter a kindergarten, going to TK in comparison to how I mentioned about my daughter who went two years to preschool. Uh, so I wanted my baby to have that opportunity. But uh, due to her date of birth, obviously she wasn't able to go. And um, same, you know, she had to go two years to preschool on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And even though she said she didn't feel ready, um, you know, this year she's going to go to kinder. But thank you. Thank you, Julissa. That's so uh, wonderful to hear that that real example of um, how quickly kids learn when they're in a um, caring and, and supportive environment. So thanks for sharing your story. Um, how about we hear from Julio next? Julia, do you want to share a little bit about your experience? Sí, gracias, Nicole. Um, creo que para resumir lo que Julissa mencionó. Um, yeah, I think just to sum de, up what, de, uh, el único, or to continue what Julissa este momento, was saying, Lionel was, uh, is creo, my eh, only child. And I think that TK a, has helped de, him a lot to develop in different ways. Um, de eso es de que you know what de, we, um, got out of it is after being in the pandemic for two years, it helped him a lot to involve him in TK at, at a young age because uh, he was able to connect with children his age. He was able to connect. Uh, he was able to have that connection in order to be able to socialize and to be, um, you know, continue being a child. 
That was his mental health was very important. Um, it was very important for us to establish him in a routine that he was able to understand that was at his level. And I think that TK uh, helped him uh, quite a lot, helped him to um, develop his ability in education and a little bit more in the area of discipline. I think uh, that helped him a lot. He's a very intelligent uh, child who likes to socialize and to learn. And I think one of the best options that we've had was that to involve Leonel and TK. And I think uh, what helped us a lot as parents was to be able to find that educational system, something that, um, you know, we don't involve. We don't, we don't get involved in it, we don't understand it. And I think um, it helped me to connect with Diana and Julissa, uh, who, you know, they've gone through those uh, steps involving uh, their children and teaching in the education system. Uh, at the beginning, to be honest, I was very nervous. I was very confused about what I had to do as a parent. I didn't understand that. I, I was the one who had to take the initiative to find the education for my children, but um, uh, learning from the experiences of other parents, uh, it helped me to find that extra help in the a school district in Pajaro Valley and to chase and to advocate for my child so that he could have the opportunity to be able to involve, uh, to get involved at school at a young age. And as I mentioned, as parents, uh, it helps a lot. Uh, it took away that um, that issue of, of childcare, which is very difficult to find these last uh, at, at this time. So you know, TK helped us with that certain uh, time of day because when we had to go pick them up, my mom and my mother-in-law would be able to go pick them up, and us as, as workers, we would be able to focus. On our work. So that allowed us to connect with different pieces to be able to have men a stable mental health, I'll, not only for myself, but also for my wife. And I think that uh, has helped us a lot. Um, this with uh, TK, and I think that's one of the best options that we can make involving our children at a young age in education so that they can learn, develop themselves, and more than anything, to understand that they're going to be able to be doing this for the next you know 15 years so i think that's one of the best options um one of the main reasons uh, if you're thinking about it if you have any doubts about sending your children to tk i think it's the best option that you can have as a parent and as a child so that is my small experience and i think uh just to summarize everything i think it's the, the mental uh, health stability uh, for your child for them to connect with other children to socialize that's all on my part thank you thank you julio for sharing that i love how you um describe not only the benefits to your um son in terms of learning and and socialization but also how you as a parent then had the opportunity to connect with other parents and get support and really learn how to uh, work with and work within the school system. That's, a, I think, a really powerful example to share. And so, Diana, now we're to you. Do you want to uh, share what your experience has been? Sí, gracias, Nicole. Bueno, pues en mi experiencia y la de mi hijo nos ayudó mucho a relacionarnos a él experience, más que más con otros. Niños. I helped uh, to uh, socialize with uh, other kids. You know, um, everything was new for him and for me about school, about friends, about connections. But my child, it helped him uh, to get involved with other children uh, and it helped him with his education because, as I said, he was my firstborn. And it's very difficult for the firstborn to learn how to share with other children uh, because, you know, they have this way of thinking that everything that's around them belongs to them. So that helped him a lot. Um, I've seen changes in a short amount of time. In a short amount of time, he was able to tell me what the letters were. And he believed he was reading even though he wasn't, but he thought he, thought he was reading. And that gave me a lot of pleasure, knowing that my son felt comfortable and ready to begin his um, learning voyage. And there's a lot of parents 
uh, at that moment, we didn't know what TK was. Uh, and I thought it was, I thought they were placing yeah. TK because he was behind in his education or he didn't know, uh, just like the other kids at his, his age. But after myself and other parents understood that TK is a great program that helps to transition kids, uh, helps them to be more uh, resilient and helps them more than anything, as Julio said, um, I'm sorry, I got a little nervous. It helps in the mental health. I think that's something that's marvelous that not all of the kids uh, can have. So that allowed me to feel a lot better as well as other parents who at that time didn't know what TK was. And it wasn't necessarily that we didn't know where to find the resources, but rather that uh, we, you know, we thought the worst sometimes. Um, we thought maybe he's not at the same level as all of the other kids, but that's that, that's not the case. You know, it's more support for them and that's shown in, in long term. And now my child, he's going to be 11. And I see the difference between my nine and my 11 year old. My nine year old did not go to TK. And I, and I can see the difference. So I I recommend that, um, that you know, the parents were not well informed about TK to see it as a good thing, see it as a blessing for our children and to take advantage uh, of that moment and these spaces that we have in order to be able to take advantage of it uh, at, the, at the maximum and also for our children to be at a good place. So there's nothing left for me to say, but to say thank you and thank you for this opportunity and to tell you that our children are at a good place when they go to TK. Thank you, Diana, And I really appreciate how you were willing to share with us how like some of the things that you thought about TK before, like thinking like, oh, maybe that's because my son's behind, but then realizing, oh no, it's actually, this is what, <laughs> this is what, this is where kids are supposed to be. This is, this is what's supposed to be offered to them. But because sometimes those things that we don't know, or might have a different understanding of, like sometimes those can become the things that prevent us or stop us from um, participating in something or enrolling our kids in something that's actually really helpful. And so I think that's very valuable that you shared that experience with us so that we can think about, oh yeah, sometimes we just have to make sure we're asking good questions and getting um, answers and support uh, if we're not entirely sure. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm going to now turn it back to you, Diana, to actually lead our, our question and discussion um, section. Gracias, Nicole. Bueno, pues ahora este, vamos a responder okay, algunas so de now las... Now we're going to respond to ¿no? some of the questions Los that were made when reunión. you subscribed for the community meeting this night. So we selected some of the most common questions that were made, and I'm going to ask our colleagues in the different uh, school districts uh, to take turns to answer them. So if you could ask your uh, questions in the chat, since they're being translated into English and Spanish, and as I repeat, there's no wrong uh, question or answer. Uh, so the first question that we have tonight is for Casey. And the question, uh, one of the most relevant questions is, are uh, you spoke about this during your presentation but we want to ensure that the information is clear for the parents the question is uh would the parents be able to keep the four-year-olds in preschool instead of tk or is it um or is it an obligation that they have to go to tk for four-year-olds Yes, so I'm glad you asked this question because we want all of our parents um, to know that it is an option. So TK is not mandatory. So if they prefer to keep their child in that preschool class that they've been in since three, and then they've had their, you know, they're, they're getting up there and aging into TK, they still have that choice to continue with that preschool program. And in fact, some, some, um, some districts or some schools may actually provide an opportunity for you to do both. So sometimes there may be a preschool 
um, area where your child can qualify for the TK. They go into TK at their school, and sometimes there's a preschool program that's close by that they can qualify for the afternoon also. Gracias, Casey. Julissa. Thank you, Casey. Julissa. La siguiente pregunta es para Sean. So the next question is for uh, uh, so the schools. Uh, I want to sign up my child for TK, but it worries me that it's only half day because I work all day. Uh, is there uh, child care or other programs before and after TK that are offered? Uh, thanks, Jorge. Um, at Santa Cruz City Schools, um, we have actually extended our TK and our kindergarten programs to be full day. So students will go to school from 8.15 to about 2.30. There's a little variation depending on which school you go to. And then we do have um, after school care available till 5.30 or 6 o'clock, depending on the school. And all of it is at no cost for a TK student. So um, we recognize that, um, especially with four-year-olds, it's really important to have that after school care. So we have made that available for students. And maybe before we go on to the next question, because I think we might have a couple other people from other districts here as well. Would anyone else, if you're from another district, would anyone else like to add if you have a different answer or would like to share what your plans are in your district for after school care. Um, I'm from Scotts Valley Unified School District. My name is Alex Friel and we provide uh, extended wraparound care at minimal cost, but we still require um, payment. So we do a half day TK program. And then there is an option for um, extended day as well as evening care all the way until 6 p.m. And it is on a sliding scale. Some are free and some are um, some are paid. It just depends on the need and the students. Thank you, Alex. Anybody else from any other districts want to share what your plans are about after school? Our aftercare. Uh, I just wanted to say one more thing. This is Alex Friel again. I noticed in the chat, all of the, as far as I'm aware, all of the districts post um, and the schools, the local schools post their um, hours um, on their website. So you can find their bell schedules for any school that you're looking at, almost any of them. I know that all of ours are, and I know that Santa Cruz City has theirs as well, because I've seen those, so. Santa Cruz City might not be updated for next year, but if you That's look at true. The, if you, if you look at the website, it's the same length of day as it would be for first through third grade at our site. For San Lorenzo Valley, it's a half day, and then they can enroll in the YMCA. Similar to Scotts Valley, it's a sliding scale, uh, depending on your income, till six p.m. That's great. Thanks so much, all of you uh, district folks for being here. <clears throat> Was there another district that wanted to chime in? For Pajaro Valley, it varies on the school sites, and um, but we do have an amazing expanded learning program that does support um, the after school programs and before school programs. You for that and yeah i don't know if you can see there's a um hand up do you want to take that person's question before you ask your next question hi um my name is adrian fernandez uh, see, I think this question is for lisa um lisa um can you speak on behalf like of, of you know pbusd um how's the um extended day how would that look like is it different for the different schools in the district or um for pbusd um 
And when's the deadline to apply? So um, do you mean the extended day as far as full PK. day TK? TK. So there are, um, there are a few different sites. Some of our sites are uh, part day the whole year. And then we do have a few sites that are going to be full day. That full day takes effect beginning in November. So the students have a time to come in and transition and um, acclimate to the program, get used to what a TK, and then we start the expansion for the full day. Um, we are enrolling currently. And so the, um, you know, we just really encourage everybody to enroll as soon as possible. So if you are ready, um, we do offer multiple ways to enroll, including online and going to the homeschool site. And then you may also go to the child development department and located in the district office to um, start your enrollment process and application. As far as a deadline, we continue to enroll all year until classes are full. And so I'm, as far as like, is there a hard deadline? No, um, but I encourage every family to do it as soon as possible so that your child has the best opportunity to start as early as they can with this, uh, their cohort, their students in the classroom and get to know them and get to learn their routines while everyone else is. It's, you know, we know it's hard to start a new program midway and so I just encourage that if you are going to enroll that you enroll as soon as possible. Thank you, Lisa. And then I wanted to add on, if I may, to the question for Lisa to the expanded learning opportunities. So if they if your child doesn't attend um, a site that has full day um, TK, there is um, at no cost expanded learning opportunities. Um, for child care also that will extend it'll it'll lead into the it'll cover the gap between the time where the regular after school program starts for the remainder of the students also because it's a half day so they will have child care and depending on the sites it'll either be um, the after school program will either be housed by our district and supported or it will be like an outside partnership with like the YMCA or another community partner. Gracias, Casey. Okay, pues la siguiente pregunta es para Lisa Sandoval. Thank you, Casey. The next question is for Lisa Sandoval, uh, um, Director for Childhood Development in Pajaro Valley. How do I know if my child is ready for TK? Uh, what happens if my child has difficulties with learning or social skills? Uh, would TK be too challenging for him? So, um, the a couple of questions inside one. So I just for being ready for TK, um, you know, it's by four years old. We uh, there is the recommendation for children to uh, go to preschool or have the opportunity for preschool. Rather, you're looking at that being a TK program or a preschool program. It's um, I think it varies from child to child, but what I've seen most four-year-olds are ready for a pre or for a TK program. It's a great opportunity for them to start developing their early learning, um, academic needs, their social emotional development. It's a great step in preparing them for kindergarten. I do hear the concern about if they have difficulties with learning or social skills. And so I would encourage if that's the case with any family, that they talk to the teacher about that. They talk to the site administrator about their concerns and their needs, because one thing we do know is that early in intervention is the best intervention. And so if your child has not already um, been assessed for developmental needs and you really do feel like there is something there that you need, or maybe you had an outside agency do an assessment to work with the teachers, and talk to the teachers and let them know so that they can support you, you, your child, and your family in getting the resources necessary. 
and um, have the best opportunity to receive the support that they the child will need to further their academic needs. Gracias, Lisa. Adelante, Julissa. Uh, uh, go on, Julissa. So this question would be for Casey. Uh, what is a typical day in TK? All right. Where you probably will will see a variety of um, classroom experiences, but what we do know is it will be um, mo most TK classrooms are rich in language development, right? We want students, they don't have to, they're not, we're not expecting kids to come in in these perfect packages. We want them to come in and be who they are as early as possible. So they actually get the social interactions. And so it's around language development, experiential play, right? Um, a balance between quiet and active learning and where a lot of the learning experiences are integrated experiences. So you might walk into a classroom and they start off the day with exploration where the students are actually exploring um, with whether they're manipulatives or different centers or rotations. Um, they might then lead into after that time, maybe a morning message with their teacher or a five day read aloud. Um, where then maybe it extends into their language arts and small group stations with interactive journals with their teachers, and then moving into purposeful playtime where students get to actually play with a purpose in different stations and have choices and have a different uh, uh, different areas from from science to maybe. Um, the tactile um, station where they're feeling and getting to different things that they're learning about. Um, then they might have a morning snack and recess time, or maybe then they move into social emotional learning where they're learning how to um, control themselves, right? And be self-aware and self-manage and be just a, a good member of their classroom community. Um, and then they might move into their small group or whole group math time where they're, again, a lot of hands-on, right, with manipulatives or math tools, um, where maybe then they go into a different type of purposeful play um, time. So you get the idea of being able to move from small group to whole group to being able to have that hands-on learning. Um, and then, um, again, maybe they go through another rotation of, of centers with science and social studies, and then it's time to go home. So really a lot of small chunks of learning spread out throughout the day. Muchas gracias, Casey. Uh, Julio? Thank you, Casey. Julio? Sí, buenas. De nuevo, entonces solamente para recalcar que en uh, caso, yeah, just to highlight again, um, eh, otra in case ayuda, por favor, de ir con su para que need, pueda, uh, more help, eh, please, please go to your school district so they can answer your questions. I think that's one of the things that helped me a lot to know what district I was going to send my child to and then seeing where I was going to find that help for them. You can also send a message. I'm going to write down uh, the phone number for Rocio Sanchez. She's our health worker who works with our promotoras. In case you want to connect with one of the promotoras to get more information about what TK is. Thank you for being with us. And I'm going to pass it back to David. Nicole, I thought it was going back to you. Did I have that right? I think you're going to say some uh, final inspiring words for us while. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm very ready. Um, no, I, as you can see, I don't have any scripted final words ready, but I, it's not hard to say a few things that really popped out for me listening to this evening. One is just back to my original message, uh, incredibly grateful to all of our presenters, 
all of our parent leaders and to all the parents that um, took some time out of their evening to listen in and learn a little bit about TK. As we said at the start, um, you know, it is admittedly um, a little bit confusing because TK is being ramped up in the state of California over a multi-year time frame. So each year, uh, the birth dates change in terms of eligibility. There can be variation between districts. And as you heard, there can be variation in the implementation between districts. I saw one of the questions coming up about ratios. There's a certain standard that the state sets in terms of how many kids to adults. But as you heard on this call, some districts can actually try to do better than that standard. So having a, having a lower student to, to, to adult ratio, but you'll never go above the ratio that's mandated by, mandated by the state to ensure that there's quality learning opportunities and, of course, safety in those classrooms. Um, but anyway, so our goal here tonight was simply to present as much as we could, as we said again in the beginning, to just give you enough information to help you start to make those choices that are the best choices for you and your kid moving to the coming school year. We hope it was helpful to you, and we strongly encourage you, as many of our district representatives said, to reach out to your local district and to begin the process if you're interested in enrolling in TK or the program that's right for you and your kids. So thank you very much. And I think a survey just popped up. So please complete the feedback poll. And uh, yeah, again, we're just really grateful here for your participation tonight. And I think you'll all get some follow-up email with some of the materials that you saw this evening. Thank you. Thank you, David. And thank you so much to Diana and Julissa for facilitating our town hall this evening and for Casey for presenting and for all of the other um, participants from districts that helped answer questions in the chat in real time, as well as during the question and answer period. Just wanna thank everyone and Julio for being here this evening, both as a parent and one of our uh, great leaders in our community. We really appreciate everyone's participation and partnership in making this happen.